Joining me now on DCTV 23, Douglas County Government Access Channel, is the superintendent of Douglas County Georgia School System, Mr. Trent North. Mr. North, how are you and your family doing in light of what's going on right now? We are learning to love each other again. Uh, when you have two daughters and they're both off in college and they have their own apartments um, and they are enjoying college and studying when they choose to, um, and now you're at home and you're having to share this space together again. Um, so I'm enjoying having them home. Uh, and, I'm, and I think they're enjoying being home. But I think they miss their apartments as well. Uh, but the North awesome. family, we're doing well, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you taking the time in light of what's happening, uh, you know, that's affecting all of us uh, on a global scale and now locally as well. You know, uh, Mr. North, let's get right to it. With school buildings closed, and as a father of two daughters in your, and as a father of two daughters in the school system myself, I know learning and teaching hasn't stopped. Can we talk a little bit about digital learning and how it's going? For parents, students, others in the community who may not be aware, can you talk about what it involves? Uh, digital learning um, is, um, let me just start here. We are getting better with our digital learning. And so we've always had a digital learning plan in place because we know that we could have snow days or inclement weather. And so our, the original digital learning plan we had in place, the intent was to support us for three to four days. And we didn't, we hadn't put together an infrastructure that, uh, of a digital learning plan that's going to be able to support us for three months. And so when we started this, um, we had a phase one. After spring break, we implemented phase two. Different states or different school system, they chose to address the uh, COVID crisis differently. For instance, I have relatives that are in Maryland. They closed school, but their digital learning started two weeks after school started. And they gave them two weeks to prepare for the rest of the year. In Georgia, most of us, we did a little differently. We um, took that Friday to try to do as much as we could. And we started ours the following Monday. Um, and so what I'm hoping parents are experiencing is every day, every week, the, the quality of the work that their child is receiving, the use of technology, uh, whether it's the quality of the work or the use of technology that each day, each week, uh, there, is, there is improvement there. So I feel good about our phase two. I feel good about where we are and where we're going with respect to digital learning in the Douglas County school system. Great, great. I got to tell you, Mr. North, my wife, who's an educator uh, in a neighboring county school system, uh, has been working diligently. And I've, you know, at times seen how uh, effective uh, she is and really how she's stepping up to the challenge. And I know with my kids learning digitally, you know, you yourself, you've got to be proud of your teachers, administrators, students, and parents. Uh, absolutely. Okay. This has been a team effort. My, the, the teachers are phenomenal. Uh, this work is actually more labor intense from my perspective than what occurs in the classroom. And so I just commend the teachers uh, for meeting this expectation and, and going above and beyond. So thank you to our teachers. Same for administrators. So when we talk about teachers, support staff, or administrators, they are doing um, a phenomenal job. Uh, so I'm just proud to be the superintendent of Douglas County School System and to be a part of the, the quality of the work that's occurring throughout the district. Yes, sir. You know, speaking of, you know, being proud, uh, one thing I had the pleasure of uh, witnessing digitally is uh, the amount of volunteers who have come together across Douglas County in helping the community. And, you know, specifically, I mean, in terms of your system's uh, meals distribution and the volunteers participating in that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, at first, I I've got to commend uh, my executive director of school and food nutrition. Um, when this, when, when COVID hit and schools had to close, we were all committed to preparing food. 
And she's been a trendsetter in the state of Georgia. In some school system, they decided to, you know, serve meals twice a week. And some tried, decided to do it every day and out of the gate. And she said, you know, Superintendent North, we, we want our kids to be fed every day. Uh, but she also knew that we were putting our staff at risk as well. And so she came up with a proposal, uh, and it's catching on across the state, is let's serve them one day. But in that one day, let's prepare enough meals so that they'll have um, two meals or, or three meals a day for five days. And so we were serving 47,000 to 50,000 meals in one day. Um, and so I commend her, I commend her staff um, for the, the planning, the preparation, and for the excellent job that they've been doing. You know, most people may not realize this, but there've been a couple of times where we couldn't get the food that was needed to serve the students. And so having Gordon Foods here in Douglas County has been an asset to the Douglas County school system. And so when we're short on bread, we could pick up the telephone and call Gordon and they would say, we, we, we got you. Um, and so right. the, the community has been very, very good uh, to uh, the Douglas County school system. We are ordering our first PPE equipment. I'm excited. We, uh, the Cornhole Company, they've converted and they're doing masks. Um, and, and so we've ordered masks uh, I want to say uh, 1,000 of the shield mask and, you know, a couple thousand of the face mask uh, in preparation for when school returns. And so whether it's our food or uh, keeping our staff safe, um, I'm, I'm very pleased with where we are and where we're going as a district. You know, that's great to hear. And I'm sure that's new information for many of our viewers who are watching this online as well. Um, you know, so really want to thank you for sharing that. Uh, tell us a little bit about plans for the upcoming school year. You know, we are in the process of working on that. We just completed our uh, digital guidance for how we're going to close in the school year. And so now we're moving into, we have two standing committees. Uh, one committee is working on what I'm calling a traditional school open. Uh, because we don't know what's going to occur between now and August. And so we've got to be prepared in the event that there is a traditional school open. And then we have another committee, and that committee is working on what if we have to continue continue digital learning? What will it look like? What improvements um, are we going to make um, as a district? The, the board has given clear guidance. Uh, they want us looking at alternatives. And so... Uh, based upon their guidance. And, and, and so we're just appreciative uh, of, of, of our governance structure. We're going to come up with some different scenarios. We don't have those yet uh, because right now we're still in the midst of trying to close out this school year. But, but do know that we are looking at, you know, how to make sure that our building um, is not only disinfected when school starts, but making sure that it's disinfected uh, when we return, more so on a regular basis. Um, you know, we are looking at having our own train tracers within the district. And so what happens if someone comes down with the coronavirus? We have a role to play in the district as well for having tracers to make sure that we can mit uh, mitigate whatever's occurring uh, to keep our kids and our uh, staff safe. And so, so, so we're working on those plans. You know, thank you for sharing that, because I think if there's anything on people's minds right now is safety and what plans are being worked on in place for this coming school year. So, again, thank you very much uh, for those detailed answers. Uh, and speaking of the school year, let's talk about the class of 2020. I'm sure that's such an experience um, that they're really uh, are having right now. Um, they're a Life right now is not what they ever imagined when they began the school year. You know, what What a year it's been for them. How are you addressing graduation and proms and all regarding the class of 2020? Well, we have already, uh, uh, we have a backup graduation day. Uh, right now, we would love to be able to continue our graduation May 21st and May 22nd. We have not canceled that yet. 
Um, and we will not, we're going to make a decision on May 5th as to whether or not to cancel that. And, you know, I got an email from a real nice nurse and, and I had a chance to speak to some of my uh, seniors and their parents and the nurse was upset because she felt like I wasn't being sensitive to the hard work that they're doing. And, and I don't think I communicated effectively enough. The, I am very appreciative of law enforcement and the medical community for what they're doing. Uh, they're the hardest working group throughout, uh, throughout this. So I'm very appreciative. But as a superintendent, I don't want my seniors to miss the importance of being a senior. So when you hear me say I'm committed to trying to continue it, that is a goal of mine. But I think sometimes people hear that part and they don't hear the other part, and that is, but not at the expense of the safety of my staff, my students, and their family members. Um, and so that's, that's important to me. And so we have a backup date, and that backup date is July 21st and July 22nd. And once again, all of that hinges on data. You know, I am ordering masks uh, for my seniors because if we have one, it's, they still may have to wear a mask um, as we're going through the graduation process. You know, and, gotcha. and so if you come, you may be required to wear a mask. So we're trying to do whatever we can, but at the end of the day, the, the data is going to dictate what we can and cannot do. We have a backup date for prom as well. Uh, and we have some other surprises for our seniors that we can't share to, so, that, to, so that they can enjoy as much as possible uh, being a part of the class of 2020. And I know for a fact that you yourself and your team as well are heavily involved with Cobb and Douglas Public Health and their assistance and offering of guidelines as we all deal with this as one. And I, and I think that's the part some may not realize uh, because I happen to sit on the board of the Cobb and Douglas Health, uh, I, I get access to the data and actually more data than the uh, average uh, citizen would have access to. And so, and that's not because of me, that's by design. Uh, and so it, it helps and, and it guides me. And so if I have a question, I pick up the telephone and I'll give Dr. Meemark a call uh, and I'll allow her to weigh in. But I also, uh, I'm fortunate enough uh, because the chairperson in Carroll County and the infectious disease person in Carroll County, that just happens to be a friend of mine as well. And so I think Douglas County, we get the benefit of having a couple of experts weigh in on our decisions. Awesome. Good to hear. And we appreciate you sharing that. And I know that the, you know, I mean, the bottom line is communication and relationships help enhance the protection of the community. Yes. So again, thank you so much. Mr. North, before we close, is there anything else you'd like to add? You know, I just, I just, I think as a community, I want to commend our board uh, for their governance throughout this process. I want to commend our teachers and our staff and our administrators uh, for the great job uh, they have done. I hope that um, we, the, the community feels pleased with our effort as well as our delivery, but we haven't worked in a silo. Um, we've worked with the mayor, and so I want to commend the mayor and her team. We've worked with Madam Chair and, uh, and the commission, and I want to commend them and their team. And so there's been this collaborative effort in Douglas County to try to keep our community safe and to try to keep as much productivity going as possible. While it may not be perfect because it's new to all of us, what I'm hoping that the community recognizes is that there is a collaborative effort amongst all of our governing entity and I'm hoping that the community is benefiting from that. So thank you for being patient with us and thank you for being supportive as we all try to govern uh, during this time. Mr. North, I can't thank you enough for joining us here on DCTV 23, Douglas County's Government Access Channel. Thank you so much for being here. You're more than welcome. Have a great day.